So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty much ready to jump in now. This is where I really have fun. And I think that you will too. You just need a few simple things. I would start out with a dish. I use a, a glass one. I find that it's just, it fits well with the size that I'm using for these, these A4 letter size papers. You can also use plastic trays. You can find something that's made specifically for suminagashi, but I just picked these up. These are just cooking dishes that I've had around for a while. Um, and you might find something at the dollar store or 99 cent store and any of these things that are probably non-reactive. I don't, I wouldn't use a metal pan, but something glass or plastic would probably work best. We have our dyed papers over here. I have some more over to the side. I've just grabbed a few, some brushes. I probably have too many. I'm just going for it this right now. Um, you might hear some noise out from the window. It's summer and the chiquita are, are talking away and cars are passing by, so I apologize, but I don't have air conditioning. So <laughs> this is how I roll. So what you're looking at here is basically my basic setup for a sumonagashi morning, you could say. I have my glass trays, I have my black ink. This is an India ink. Traditionally, a sumi ink would be used. It's, a, it's an ink prepared with pine soot and pine resin. And I've tried it, but to be honest, I'm really looking to get those big, those nice saturated blacks. And I've just found this Pabeo brand to be fantastic. I just love it for ink painting in general and then for this process. So I highly recommend if you can get some Pabeo India ink, it's gonna work well for you. I use a surfactant, surfactant, oh, can't even pronounce it right. I'm not very good at the pronunciation of things. You'll soon find out in these videos. This is liquid dish soap. It's, I like the clear kind, but even the green or an orange, all of it will work. I prefer this, it just makes me feel a little less like I'm adding even a little less color to the situation down here. This is going to help the ink spread on the water surface a bit, and it's also going to help like separate the rings. It's gonna add the little zip it needs to push the ink out of the way and add that clear spot. So you do these kind of repetition moves of the black and this kind of liquid that has just a hint of this in it, which I'll do right now, basically. I wish I could give you a, a strong, hardcore recipe for this. But what I do is basically I just kind of wet my brush. I have a little dish of water here. And I just put the little tip in it. Like I like just dab a little bit of this in there. And I squirt, just kind of swoosh it around. Ooh, it seems like it's turning a little bit pink color for some reason. And my water is a little bit... Now, I already feel like this is going to make it probably a little too strong, but I'll write it out. We'll see what happens. Um, I have a variety of brushes here. Probably I'm only going to use... I'm going to take a few of these away so I don't get confused. And maybe I'll bring back this one. I'm going to wet it just a hit. And I don't know. I just don't want to start with a completely dry brush. These brushes are a little bit beat up, so I kind of like to get it into a point here. This extra one um, is a new brush and it's smaller so I can identify it. And over to the side here, I have a little bit of alcohol. It's like 99%, 96% alcohol. And I use it to get some different little effects too that we'll try here in a second. So I have my paper and I'll just keep going with this. I'd like to decide this is a little bit smaller brush, so I'll use this for the this medium here. Oh my head, guys. Let me put a little ink in here. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm so excited to get going on this. So this is gonna act as a resist and also help a little bit with the spreading. And I have let this water rest for about an hour. I was preparing things around the studio. You don't have to do that, but I found that it kind of helps just to have a settle. I have very heavy water here. There's a lot of minerals in it. In it. You can even use um, not demineralized water. What is the name of it? 
Okay, the name will come to me, but the type of water that you put into your iron, you can find it in your laundry section of your supermarket. And uh, the name will come to me and I'll put it even in the comments in the link here. You can use that and that works well, but I just use normal tap water. Honestly, I haven't found that much of a difference. So I'm just gonna start by putting down a little drop. And you can kind of see, I like to get it. Yeah, and see, I can see that it's not resisting as much as I'd like. It's kind of slow. So I'm gonna dip this back in the Joy liquid here into the dish soap. Let's see if that helps at all. Yeah, it's gonna help. Let's see if we can get it some more. And you might find that you have a lot of ink on the brush. It might drip down to the bottom. I don't know, it doesn't bother me. It's probably not um, a bad sign or a good sign, but I like to really load up my brush with ink because I'm really hoping to get some darker colors on here and it takes a little while. Again, this is not, let's see what happens when I just add the soap right to the brush, see? This is just soap right, not even mixed with water. So that's a little too intense for me. And now it might make it a little bit harder for this ink to run. So you do have to play with a little bit, but I do like the black I'm getting now. And I'm gonna move in here, you don't have to put it right in the middle, you can. You might notice that there's some bleeding happening that might indicate that there's a little bit too much um, ink on your brush or a little bit too much of this resist surfactant happening. Yeah, it's a little bit. But gosh, I really like what's happening up in this corner. So I might just even stop here, grab one of these sheets, cause I'm just like, what is this interesting thing? And just pop them right on there because I'm really liking the swirl happening. So I'm taking two of these tea bags and just let them go on there. Okay, I let them sit for a second. I also have an extra pan over here for rinsing a little bit if I feel I need it but I'm gonna let them sit, let the ink soak in as much as I can. Gently grab them. Let's see, this is a little bit. And then I also put them aside to dry, just on a flat surface. I have kind of a tile surface here. Let's see how this is going. One looks really nice. I love those little swirls in there. So I'm just setting it right here on this tiled surface, any type of non-stick surface, and they'll be dry in a few hours if you're in a warmer climate as I am. And I know you can skim it with paper. I do that. I just feel like it's kind of a waste sometimes, but I do keep, I come over here grabbing it, guys. Like I could skim this a bit, but I don't like to waste so much paper. Let's see how the second round goes. I'm gonna start with the surfactant this time and put that down. I know that there's a two-handed method to doing, I mean, sorry, a one-handed method where you keep both brushes, even up to three brushes in one hand. I've tried it a few times. It, I don't know, it doesn't work for me. So I'm doing it, I, I like to do it like this. I just like to take my time with it. And this is how I like to do it. It does look pretty cool when people do it with one hand though. I do like that. 
I'm gonna keep dripping it here. I wanna try and get a little bit blacker in this. This is working well. And it's just your air, the air, a little bit of your breath, maybe a, a circulation of the air in the room that's causing these different patterns. And sometimes I find the dirtier the water, the more the ink floats on top. So I don't change the water necessarily after every time. I might wait a few times. Um, there we go. One last one, let's see. What I might do is just drop in a little bit of this alcohol here on the edges. I like how it kind of makes some interesting swirly effects there. So, shall we try? What should we try here? Oh, we could try this blue paper. Why not? I'm going to just put it down there. I'm also going to try just dip dye this one a little bit in here. And what about a little edge of this one? Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and lift this up. This is the coffee filter. It turned out quite nice. I'm going to just give a little bit of a rinse if necessary and slip it over here in this nonstick area. Let's see how this blue one, if it absorbed at all, how we're doing here. Hmm. The darks are quite dark. It's a little hard to see because the color, the, the paper was kind of dark. I'm giving it a little rinse. Let's see if I can get up closer to the, to the screen here. Well, there certainly are some nice marbling things happening. Again, I'm going to put this over to the side. Oh, and our last one. Oh, that was kind of nice. This was kind of a drywall tape. It could be a nice little piece for collage. So again, this, this water bath is getting a little bit murky, but surprisingly, it's still working, even though it's a little hard to see where your rings may be. Again, I don't like to throw out the water too frequently and be wasteful and always cleaning because it kind of takes you out of that flow as well. I'm gonna push some of these rings here, just with the resist. And I'll try and zoom in and see if you can see these a little bit better, but it's kind of fun to just work it and push it too and see what kind of shapes you can make. Let's see. Put down this piece here. Sometimes I just tear off a little piece if I see something that looks kind of interesting. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit delicate. I'm going to maybe rinse it slowly and then drop it into a nonstick area so it doesn't just... We'll see what this guy did. Hmm. Not as dark as I would like it, but it's still lovely. Just a super nice texture in there. Okay, I am gonna change this now. It's getting a little murky. So I'm gonna just keep going here. Now I see the ink going down to the bottom. I probably have like, again, like I do use a lot of ink on my brush. But again, I'm not gonna let that scare me or stop me. 
I like to get it pretty black. So I tend to load it up. I'm going to play with these ones a little bit, blow on them a little bit, maybe add a little bit of this, which I always like. Again, this is the alcohol. It just makes a wonderful pattern. And I'll try this tissue paper maybe on some. And I'm not even placing the whole thing. I, again, I'm not probably as careful as some of you may be with this process, but I just like using parts of the paper. And I'm gonna lift this one back up here. This is a tissue paper. It's a, it, it did okay, I'm gonna rinse it just a second here, see how we're at. I think it's got some nice qualities in there. This is our black bean dye. And I just love these transparent layers with just a hint of color. It's so pretty. Like to pull it a little bit. This is a natural paper made in Italy, handmade. Let's see how that one pulls up. It's been tea dyed. Let's see here. It's quite lovely. I love this paper. Just absorbs it so incredibly. I'm so excited to jump in with the colored stuff. I'm gonna do a few white ones now. pen if you want and this is just a little stick pen but I like those little swirls it makes I'm making a mess here. But what is that? What does that mean exactly? I've got a lot of ink on this brush. Again, people were like, no, it's too much. It's too much. It probably is. But again, I feel like it helps me get things a little bit 
darker from time to time. So I like these odd shapes happening, so I'm just gonna pull it right now. I got these white tea bags. I'm gonna take up that one. I'm going to add this Japanese paper in here. And heck, what the heck, I'll put in a little bit of this drywall tape. And again, I won't be able to sh show you too much because it's just so delicate. This one, I got a little bit dark. Let's see here. Oh, and this guy's falling in. Still quite a smoky gray. You know, it's like, it's hard to, it's still something I'm learning about. It's still a process I'm working with and will continue to work with. And I'm really liking this absorbent kind of drywall tape. Lots of potential for little collage pieces. I'm back and I just, you know, usually they let the water settle and be still when you start, but again, I like to just get going. I also like to see these things swirling around in less probably predictable patterns, you could say. I do have little droplets coming off of my hand which is kind of disturbing the water. And also I notice the tip of my brush is not so pointed, so I'm gonna try and load the brush a little differently, just touching the surface of the water slightly. Pulling them out. Oh, that's kind of nice. Oh, I like that. Need to wash it a little bit. Probably need to change my my water where I'm rinsing things, but. I kind of like the little added texture it's adding to the edge here, a little bit of gray, giving some different tones. So instead of cleaning the water or skimming it with a piece of paper, I'm gonna keep building on this layer. You can tell there's some a lot of impurities, possibly some leftover alcohol left in this this bath here because it's it's doing kind of strange things not the perfect rings that you see in traditional sumanagashi where everything just kind of works in harmony together this is a little bit messier style <laughs> messier style yes let's throw this baby in there This was the, like an avocado dye. It's got a bit of a peachy color to it. It's on a tea bag.
So I'm back and these have dried and I just wanted to give you a little look at the final result at some of these pieces I made here in the, the session. I'm loving these light um, gauzy pieces made out of the Japanese rice paper. This is another one that I really like the, the look of. The tea stain is just really pretty. It just gives it such an antique weathered look. Also, the coffee filters are a big favorite of mine, and I'm working on some projects to do with these as well. I love the shape. I love this kind of circle shape. It's got a lot of potential for scrapbook making, even incorporating into painting. And these tones, too, are just like those lovely grays, the, the darks. It just soaks it up so well. You can see the other side is, it didn't bleed through, it just is on this one side, and it just looks fantastic. The blues were really pretty, a little bit more subtle. These were some smaller swirls. I don't know if you can kind of see them in there. And even this drywall kind of, I can't call it a tape because it doesn't have an adhesive. I'm not sure what they, I just found it at the hardware store here in Italy and I just thought, oh, that looks interesting because it just seemed like a, almost like a cotton rag kind of paper. Again, a lot of great potential for working with these little pieces incorporating them into scrapbooks. Of course, the 100% the cotton handmade paper is also fantastic to work with. There isn't any sizing in this paper that I'm aware of. It's just like cotton rag and it just soaks it up in such a beautiful way. This was one of the avocado dyes. It's got a, a faint blush to it. It's not as, it didn't hold as well as I was hoping. And, I brought some other ones out that I've had in past, you know, I made these different stages a month ago, or two months, three months, four months ago. I mean, it's they've been a while and they're still holding their color quite well. I'm still learning. Um, it could have been, I don't know, maybe the alum was a little bit overpowering for this wash. I'm not quite sure because these other pieces are, like I said, from months ago, and there's still quite a lovely blush pink paper color. This is a batch of the black bean I did, again, in that same period, probably four or five months ago, holding on quite nicely, quite strong. You really just have to play with it a little bit. You will get different results, but I do highly suggest finding some tea bags if you can, or um, using your own used tea bags, finding gauzier paper, tissue paper can work, and just have fun with it. Going back to the, the coffee filters, I just think this just got so much potential to work with in terms of an art project, and I'm really excited. I have some ideas spinning in my head, and even just to rip and cut them up a little bit, there's just... A, it just got a lot of potential. I keep saying that word, but I really mean it. <laughs> I, I can kind of see where I'd like to incorporate some of these, these different shapes and patterns. So at the very least, I hope this has inspired you to get some ink, any, a calligraphy ink, like I recommended before, the Pabeo is fantastic. Get a little water, a little Joy liquid soap, and give it a shot. And I hope to see you back here soon.